I'll take questions now. First off, is everything okay? Yeah, I guess. Just a little down after the show. Uh, can you tell us what happened? Just didn't execute on jokes, lacked energy. I uh, guess you could say I, uh, I didn't prepare well enough. This may be unprofessional, but it'll be okay. Thanks. Hey, I just gotta look forward to next week. Anything else? Yeah, are you wearing a fake mustache? Yes. No more questions. Welcome on in to Call It A Night on Fubo Sports Network, the show that likes to have lots and lots of fun. I'm your host, Julie Stewart-Binks, and we have such a special epi for all you cyaners out there. We are so thrilled to be joined by comedian and longtime suffering New York sports fan, my friend Chris Stefano. Hello. Thank you for being with us here today. What a good epi. I know, great epi. That's good like... epi. You with the mustache is hot. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I do. I want to, yeah, you look like, like my Uncle Nino with the mustache, and it's hot. I think you got some interesting issues there. Maybe yeah, no, we're absolutely. Dive yeah. into that later. Thank in you, the Father show. Bill, for the issues. <laughs> Catholics, you know what I'm talking about. We don't have to get into it, but it is no. a real issue. Well, we um. are. Speaking of issues, we're going to talk uh, a lot about New York sports, and we're going to jump into more fun shenanigans with Chris on his comedy career. Play a couple of games. Great side profile here. You are. I mean, it's it's stunning how good your profile is. I'm being dead serious. That's not my good side. I know you can't side. do this stuff it's in 2019. It's like, when is she toxic? But I'm telling you, she's it's it's amazing. The oh, profile thanks. is great. If I is that your like, good side? Do you no. say it's your good side, the left that's, or the right? That's my bad it's side. It's perfect. My bad side. All right. Well, I'm glad it's that from we, Old Navy. It's twenty dollars. Glad we <laughs> figuring this out right now. But I'm I'm looking forward right now to having a professional comedian watch me do these jokes. So let's dive into tonight's headlines. Don't read the prompt here, by the way. Okay. Okay. Cleveland Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield, whose team is 2-6, and six, shaved off his extreme facial hair, claiming he didn't deserve it. Which kind of makes you wonder, what did a guy who's 1-7 and seven do to deserve this? <laughs> okay. Jealous of the attention, Odell Beckham Jr. won up Mayfield <laughs> by getting a full Brazilian. Nice. <laughs> Brazilian people are nuts. <laughs> Truly. That country is wild. I mean, I want to go there, but it's too yeah. far south. I don't want to go. If Spirit Airlines doesn't go there, I'm not going. Yeah. So I don't know if they go to Rio. But that was a decent joke. Yeah, it's all right. All right, so to recap, Mayfield feels he's not worthy of a handlebar mustache, $12 million a year in a 2-6 and six record. Totally worth it. <laughs> what are the chances he doesn't have HPV? <laughs> You think it's just a hundred percent guarantee? I mean, we all have it, but it's like yeah. Baker don't they say has everyone it. has HPV? It's like listen, it's a all couple right? of speed bumps. Get over it. Yeah, that's the newsflash. Dean Spanos, owner oh, of the Los Angeles Chargers, is denying rumors that the team is moving to <laughs> London. However, if the LA Chargers ever did relocate to London, England, their helmet design would include a lightning bolt and torrential rain. That one actually sucked. <laughs> 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 but, but but the delivery was good, and I'm not saying I could do any better. No, no, By the no. way, you're a, a I'm comedian. not saying I could do any better. But that one is like you know, I mean, yeah. What are you gonna? Do? I mean, it's rain on the helmet. First of all, it doesn't look like rain on the helmet. It looks like something else, and that's the team I'd go see. Come see the San Diego Jizzers. I mean, it would sell out. They need. Something. I would. Are you kidding me? LA, I'd show up LA. with a poncho every day, just getting rained on. All right, let's see what you think of this. Alex Rodriguez has it's launched sticky. a new That's... show, Back in the Game, where he gives financial advice to former athletes running their own businesses. His number one tip for growing your business: HGH. Nice. Good. 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 I like that. Back HGH. on track. I'd like to start taking it. I'm, my nipples are getting so. It's like one of those things you get to an age. Like, I'm 35, and like I'm trying to work out, but my nipples just keep getting puffier and puffier and puffier. I'm going to start juicing and do HGH. Yeah, or get a fake butt like J-Lo. I don't know. Dutch Olympian Medea Gafford was sentenced to eight and a half years in jail after her car was found with more than three pounds of methamphetamines in it. <laughs> Authorities became suspicious when her car would run for hours and then suddenly crash. Yep. The fact that the Dutch even have an Olympic team, I didn't know that. Really? I'm the being Netherlands? Dead They're huge into sports. 
Oh, the Netherlands is Dutch, right? <laughs> Some of these countries, it's like, you know it's, what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like, we've got to play pretend. Hard to keep track. So all these times, like, what? Okay, I guess we have to care. It's like, it's, it's America and China and Russia. It's, what about oh, Canada? I mean, who gives a shit? It's like, it's like literally, you just have to play pretend in 2019. It's like, I have to pretend that like Houston's a great city. It's like, yeah, it's a fine oh, city. No, but it's like, yeah, it's it's not, if it's not in the Northeast, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares about the Dutch. Go ahead, do, I okay. would be doing crystal meth too if I looked at right. it. Well, maybe you'll like this one, okay? <laughs> During Monday night's game between the Giants and the Cowboys, a black cat ran across the field, stopping the game for several minutes. I felt so badly for that black cat. He was running for his life, not knowing which way to turn, looking terrified. Oh, no, wait, I'm thinking of Daniel Jones. Oh my, was it Daniel Jones in blackface? <laughs> No, it was not Daniel Jones in blackface. Yes. At least oh. that, though, could find the end zone. I'm happy that I said it, but it's your face on camera. <laughs> yeah. She said it. Who cares? It doesn't matter. What, are you going to f***ing cancel me? I took the bus here. <laughs> <laughs> San Jose Sharks forward Evander Kane is being sued by the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas for failing to pay back half a million dollars in gambling markers given to him in April. Kane said he learned of the lawsuit when he woke up next to a severed shark's head in his bed. Nice little mafia joke. Yeah, because right, that, that, that hits close to home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the now, and I'm sure somebody's going to be outraged that we severed shark's head. It's like, go stick a plastic straw up your ass. I don't know what you're talking about. Paper straws, plastic straws. It's like, shut up. You don't have real problems. Nobody in war-torn countries care about the <laughs> straws, but America, it's like you just have to, you're bored. I like so this. All right, we are, well, we're we're going to rant more on. later on in the show, but one last joke I for did you crystal all. meth with the Dutch woman. <laughs> That's why I'm this way. <laughs> Dwight Howard has reportedly been working out after Lakers games after kicking his habit of eating 24 candy bars a day. Oh, my God. The sudden change occurred when Howard realized that while most players lose a step in their 30s, he was about to lose a foot. He was eating a candy bar for every kid he has. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Cromartie could eat a lot. That guy goes raw daddy. Well, that's the headlines. <laughs> yeah. Print it. All right, for real this time. No, we're rocking and rolling on this beautiful Thursday. Don't go anywhere. When we return, we're going to find out all about Chris DeStefano's career as a comedian and much, much more. Welcome back into Call of the Night. We've been having some fun making yokes on all the biggest sports stories, but now it's time to leave the wisecracks to our guest comedian, Chris Stefano. Chris, I... you've been all over doing so many different things. Mm -hmm. What are you up to right now? I want now? to sit on the couch like this. Yeah. Just like a sphinx cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what'd you say? What are you, what are you up to these days? Where uh, um, are you working on? What am I working on? Um, I have... This actually feels great. I have... Um, Everything's in development with me. I always have freaking shows in development. I always have a pilot and it never goes. I'm Chrissy Pilots. I'm Chrissy almost. <laughs> I almost get TV shows. I almost I almost get things and then they just don't go. But so right now, I don't know. I had a deal with Comedy Central. That's gone. Thanks. Um, and um, and now I just do my I do my stand up. I have a podcast, The History Hyenas, yes. which sells out. So if you want to get offended about history, listen to the podcast. It's not even offensive, my podcast. It's just like, we're just telling the truth. Right. It's like it's like uncomfortable truths about history where it's like, what do you want me to tell you? It's like, you know, I love Gandhi too, but the guy had 12-year-old brides. So it's like, what, what do you want me to freaking tell you? You know, like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Well, you mentioned, like, even in our A block too, just mm -hmm. the idea of the... I'm allergic to fake plants. Yeah. Are these well, fake plants? Yeah, well, we got lots of Genuinely, fake plants. Genuinely, I'm allergic to fake plants and cats. And well, it's no a cats on this show. wild thing. I'm allergic to fake plants and cats, and I just realized this. I've never in my life had goat cheese, pork chops, or seen the movie The Godfather. Well, Isn't you know that what? wild? Goat cheese is uh, is goat cheese tastes I'm like it to this. smells, which is goat. So I I Oof. never go towards that. But you mentioned you never go towards that. I know goat. I never go towards it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned I should be writing a monologue on. I I mean. That's the kind Send of shit you jokes. guys are spewing out. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, so back to your podcast. You, yes. you kind of mentioned the whole cancel culture. As a comedian, how do you navigate that? I think, well, first of all, as a comedian, the reason why I'm safe is because I'm, you know, a straight white male, boo. But I have a daughter who's Puerto Rican, so it's like, yay, diversity, he gets it. So I can, like, you know, just that fake, you know, whatever you have to deal with, with just the fake shit that everyone spews. Um, but I, 
I um, I believe truly that you can't be hurtful and funny at the same time. Mm. So if you're being funny and people are genuinely laughing at, yeah, there may be a couple of you know social justice warriors that are like, I'm offended by everything, but it's because they want power and like nobody ever paid attention to them and they want power and that's the way they get it. But if it's genuinely funny, I don't believe you can be hurtful. I think they come from different parts of your brain and heart. Because as comedians, when somebody says something hurtful, it's like, oh, I'm not laughing at it because you're coming from the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So my comedy is like, I don't hate anybody. So if I like joke, I mean, I hate individuals right, as yeah, people, but not because of anything of their race, gender, religion. It's like I never, I think anybody who generalizes anybody is an idiot. Is there, are there any jokes or areas of your life that you just don't take material from? Um, no, I just, I'll t I'm very open. I mean, like I'm sitting, anything. I'm sitting like a sphinx cat right now on your show. <laughs> I don't care about anything. I'll joke about anything. It's like my healing okay. process, you know? So, of that's what I always use my sense of humor, for, sense of humor for is like to, you know, I joke about my dad so much, but it's and and I love joking about him. I love him, but it's like when I was a kid, my parents were divorced, and that hurt me. So I was like, I would just joke about it. Mm -hmm. But but that's so that's how I live my life. But listen, people in t in 2019, I mean, people have problems with everything. So I think the minute you like, unless you actually did something wrong and committed a crime, and then it's like yes, apologize. But it's like other than that, it's like I'm not going to say I'm sorry because you're pressuring me into it. Like I'm joking. I, they're words. Like come on. Again, nobody in war, no, we, we only get mad at this stuff because we're just, I mean, what else can we do? Well, I mean, I think at this point, and I was listening to your podcast, it feels as though the pendulum's going the other way. Okay. That's actually real. Yeah, so I was going to say, okay. We gotta, we gotta yeah. light that at some point. Uh, but you are a New York sports fan. Yes. You, you're a long time suffering fan. In what ways have you made jokes in that realm? Like, how do you look at it as a comedian? For New York sports? Yeah, do you touch it at all? I mean, I don't really touch it. I mean, because the truth is, I'm a, I'm a sports fan. I love sports. But it's like, I mean, you know, the Yankees are the Yankees. You know, the Giants were really good, and now they're not. I mean, I cannot believe that Daniel Jones has the same face as Eli Manning. <laughs> it's like we drafted a guy whose face looks like, who just looks like he's drooling all the time. Again, it's like, why are you going back to back drool faces? But, but, so I just don't expect anything from the Giants. I love them. I'm not one of those guys that like, gives up on my team. It's like, they're my team. And I also believe, I also believe wherever you're from, like geography is destiny. So it's like, if you're born in New York, I'm sorry, but you have to root for the New York sports teams. Mm -hmm. Like if you're, if you're from Boston and you're like, oh, but actually I'm a Yankees fan. It's like, get away oh, from me, no. dude. I don't trust you at all. Yeah. I don't trust you at all. It's like, <laughs> we have nothing in common now. What, no, 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 no. You were born in Boston. You have to root for that team and that's okay. Like I would never, like when people are from Boston and they're like, oh, sorry, I'm a Red Sox fan. I'm like, no, no, I'm happy you're a Red yeah, Sox fan. Like you're the enemy. Yeah, That's your passion. You got to stick with yeah, that. Yeah, so I think, you know, but I think like with New York sports, I mean, it's just, we're so bad. I mean, New York is bad. I mean, Boston is like the trophy no, town. One. I mean, it's just laughable now. Who's the worst? The what worst? Team? The Knicks mm -hmm. because of the owners, you know, but, but I, because they can be so great. I'm an Islanders fan, so we've run uh, 10 games in a row now, yeah. but, which is good. But even the Islanders, it's like nobody cares. I mean, yeah. they're at the Barclays Center. It's like you got hipsters there. Like, they're keen while they're gluten-free office. It's like, <laughs> you're at a hockey game, asshole. This team's won 10 games in a row. It's no like, one what? cares. Nobody cares. Eh, hockey is different. Like, I'm just, Canadian, so I like it, but no one no, cares. Nobody cares. Like, the Barclays Center is just like, even the Nets, it's like, nobody cares. It's like, well, I don't know. Okay, but we found, you know, you used to be a basketball player. You have, like, yeah. one of the highest records. Of Division three. I mean, nobody cares. Again, it's like... Division Second leading seven. scorer in your school's history. Yeah, what but happened? Like, what? We played our games Hall in a famer. high school gym. <laughs> yeah, Hall of Fame. What does that mean? It's like my mom picked the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know, it's like she literally, the Hall of Fame induction, my mom baked cupcakes. Like nobody can. Didn't you, did you try to like go down that path of being a pro athlete? Um, yeah, I like went to like a bunch of like overseas camps, you know, like in like the Northeast. And like I just didn't get, well, I actually got picked to play for like one team in Ireland, but I just didn't want to go. Yeah. I was like, this, what's the point of this? I, then I went to school to be a physical therapist. Yes, yeah, so you have a doctorate. Which, I, yeah, nobody ever believed. What? what? Yeah, it's like wild. Like, I'm like, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, like, even like my family, like, didn't believe it. They were like, is this like one of your skits? I was like, you just came to my doctorate ceremony. You think I went to three and a half years for a joke? So why, why did you do it? And then why aren't you doing it anymore? So I was a, um, I love being a physical therapist. It was great. I was a, first I wanted to work with athletes and then I was like, oh, they suck. And then I was like, I'm going to work with adults. And then like, I remember like this one woman was like, I feel like I pulled a muscle in my pinky. And I was like, get, I hope, once you get hit by a bus. <laughs> and, and I was like going to push her in front of traffic. So then, but then I got into pediatric physical therapy and that's great. Pediatric okay. physical therapy was like, 
the best. Um, work with like ch uh, children that like really need it. So I love that job. And then I started to do comedy simultaneously with physical therapy, like physical therapy, like 7 a.m. to like 4 p.m. And then comedy from oh like 5 p.m. to like 2 o'clock in the morning. Every That's night, insane. burning the candles at both ends. And then comedy took over and I had to leave physical therapy. So what was that thing that originally drew you to comedy? Um, I think I just always wanted to do stand up. I loved like I loved Jim Carrey movies. Um, I loved old school Sam Kinison, uh, Bill Burr. When I watched Bill Burr's Comedy Central or HBO Half Hour Special, like 2007, I was like, oh, I want to do what this guy's doing. And then it took me mm. a couple of years to like get the balls to do it. Um, but I just I was I was always motivated to not have a job where I was like sitting at a desk yeah. all day. Like always motivated for that. I don't I don't you know, hate on anyone who does do that, because, like, we both need to exist. People that, like, just live life... Crit like, I, I feel like I'm one of those guys, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna okay. sputter out. Where, like, somebody else working <laughs> a nine-to-five will just live to 100 and have... But they won't have as many highs. Yeah. Not in the drug sense, but in the highs of... Maybe in the drug sense. I'm, I want to do crystal meth in that Dutch yeah. woman's trunk. Yeah, hey, well, we got plenty of time still on the show. Thank you, Chris, so much for all the insight on your this, career This is crazy beyond. I sat like this the whole uh, <laughs> segment. You can catch Chris next in Bloomington, Minnesota, November 21st to 23rd at the House of Comedy, then November 29th the 30th at Gotham Comedy Club in New York. We've got to take a quick break on the show, but don't go anywhere. Chris isn't going anywhere. When we return, we're going to give our hottest and weirdest takes on New York sports and beyond. Call tonight. I'm JSB with comedian Chris Stefano, and Chris, you were deemed the most New York guy of all time. Whoa! Uh, you're also a big sports fan. We thought we would do a fun. We would we would do a game that would be fun. I'm gonna try to speak right now with ridiculous takes from sports talk callers okay. in this city because they're always ranting and raving about the most ridiculous things. So yes. this is our our segment called Keep Your Rants On. Love it. What a graphic. Oh, nice. OK, so what we're going to do is we have three bags here. We have, okay. we're going to pick out a name, an emotion, and then a topic. OK. And then we are going to be that person, and we're going to rant about whatever this topic is. We do not know what they are yet. Okay. So I'm stressing out, like, okay. whew, stress. And then we're going to read to our cameras what they are. Okay. Got it. So I'm okay. going to go first so you that first, yeah, um, I can I just, show I, what we're doing. Yeah, because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> OK, so just... I am going to be Tommy from Rigo, Rigo Park. Park. Tommy oh my from God. Rigo Park. You better talk with an Asian accent. <laughs> it's a big Asian community now. In uh, eufo <laughs> euphoric is my emotion. OK. What does that word mean? And I hope I, I hope I know what the words my mean. My topic is concession options. Got it. Okay, so I'm Tommy from Rigo Park. I'm euphoric about concession options. Put the mustache on. All right, first time caller, long time listener. I just got to tell you guys, I I am so excited about the concessions at Yankee Stadium because you know what? Like honestly, you don't have to worry about just having a hot dog anymore. You can have sushi. I love that I can sit and watch a game and just eat sushi. You know what? Nobody nobody knows about this yet. It's a new thing, okay? I got a source. I got a source. He knows on the third level you can get the best edamame in all of New York, okay? All right, I'll hang up and listen. Thank you so much. I don't have a question, but I'm a big fan. Nice. All right. I love that. that My was last great. day on TV. Okay. That was great. Cool, no, it was cool. fantastic. All right, your turn, Chris. Okay. So I picked the name first. Yeah. Name. Let's think about, let's see. I am Annabelle. I have to, okay, so Annabelle from GWB from the George Washington Bridge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Annabelle from, I'm on the, okay. <laughs> Surprised. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, I guess we'll. And then yeah. we're going to talk about post-game traffic. All right. Okay, so, so you're I, Annabelle from the George W. Well, Bush, Bush Bridge. I, I'm <laughs> Annabelle from the George. Okay, I'm Annabelle GWB, post-game traffic, and I'm surprised. Uh, hey, everyone, my name's Annabelle. I'm on the George Washington Bridge calling you guys. I'm in traffic because of these 
the Yankees <laughs> that lost again. And I swear to God, if traffic doesn't start moving live on the air, I'm going to get into my car and jump out of my car and kill myself, Trump 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Great job! Thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. All right, okay. Okay, oh, let's do more. Oh, oh, you keep going. Okay, so okay. I, I'm Eddie the Fist. This is wild. Eddie the Fist. Okay. Well, yes, that's my grinder name. <laughs> um, I'm angry, and I am gonna rant about tanking. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Eddie the Fist from Brooklyn. I'm angry and uh, about tanking. All right, guys, you know what? I am so, I just got a call right now because like, I am so upset about the fact that I think that the Jets are actually tanking. This is this is coming from a guy I know on the ground in MetLife. He says, this is what it's all about. They're not actually bad, okay? The, the Jets are actually good, okay? But they're trying to tank because they want Tua. No, 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 we can't wait for next year. We gotta do it now, all right? I, I think this is a real thing. I'm believing about this. All right, I'll hang up and listen to what you guys have to say. <laughs> Two up. Uh, All right, one more. All right, one, one more. more. Good, yeah, good. yeah. Good at this game. Yeah, okay. yeah, real good at this. Oh, here, oh, here. Well, Who oh, do you want? I'll do oh, yeah. Rick from Staten Island. Okay. There we go. And then, um, Rick from Staten Island is frightened. <laughs> and, uh, overpaid stars. <laughs> Hey, um, <laughs> what's up? How you doing? My name's uh, Rick. I'm an off-duty firefighter. For, uh, I live out there on Staten Island out there. And, uh, you know, um, I just want to say, uh, you know, first and foremost, you Osama Bin Laden. Um, as always, you know, I start every call like that. And uh, I'm just a little scared. You know, I'm living on Staten Island out here. You know, I moved over to Verrazano Bridge, you know, to be away from these high-paid stars. And it's like, you know, now I got... I got these out. I got Daniel Jones living next to me, and it's like, guy, it's like, you know, every day, every day I come outside, I'm like, this guy's got a face like it's freaking Halloween. I'm like, are you wearing a mask, guy? I mean, your face looks like it's melting off in front of you, you're scaring the kids. You know, you scare my children, my wife, Colleen, my daughter, my wife, Colleen, my daughter, Colleen Jr., they come outside. <laughs> And, you know, they see Daniel Jones' face, and it's like, guy, why don't you just go move to Hoboken with Eli Manning, and both your faces can melt together. Thank you. Woohoo! That was great. Yeah. All right, okay. Sadly, we can't play any more of this amazing game, yeah. but we are amazing actors. Yeah. Thank you for playing along. We aren't ready to call a night just yet. We haven't heard from you guys, the fans. Stay tuned for more after this. Welcome back. Before we call it a night, Chris, where else can people find you? Right? Of course, Grindr.com, um, <laughs> Eddie Fist, um, <laughs> and um, you could ChristyComedy.com, mm -hmm. HistoryHyenas.com. Um, that's where I am, Christy Comedy on Instagram. And you and Twitter. also perform around New York right now, at least this week. Yeah, I'll be in New York uh, at the Comedy Cellar uh, tonight, and then November 29th and 30th, Gotham Comedy Club. I believe November 30th is sold out. Sorry. Ooh, but right. November 29th, Friday, get those tickets, y'all. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to come. Thank you for being here with us today, and thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend. See you, babe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Make sure to check out Drinks with Binks on Friday at 8 p.m. Yeah. on Fubo Sports Network for my interview with Fox NFL Sunday host Kurt Menefee. But for now, we are going to call it a night. But also make sure to check out things on Fubo Sports Twitter. We've got lots of great things on Twitter. And if wherever you're calling it a night, make sure it's a good one. <laughs>